How do you enjoy the gig on stage? Yeah, we had a really good time. It was really good fun, and uh, we really enjoyed getting to play for everybody. It was good. It was good. Um, if you're preparing for such a gig, do you just your own always the same set list? As you, or do you think oh, I got just got an hour and 50 minutes? I'm gonna pick something different or something. Especially for this audience. Yeah, we, we play, well, we pretty much play something slightly different every night because we're quite improvisational. So normally we know what maybe the first two or three numbers that we're going to play, we know what they are. And then after that, we kind of feel it out with the way the crowd are going and, and see how we want it to flow from there. So The decision is yours to uh, decide what to do then. Yeah, always. We don't write any set lists or <laughs> anything like that. So, uh, and then the... Well, you know, one night, maybe one song will be five minutes and the next night will be ten minutes. You know, it goes its own way. So we really go with the feel of it, yeah. I just like playing music. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've always played with lots of different people. And to me, it's like a language, right? Playing an instrument and especially blues, it's a language. So uh, it's just good fun to get together with uh, all the musicians that you meet and uh, uh, you know, play, see what comes out, play some music, yeah. If you produce a record, how do you know a song is finished? Or is it always a work in progress? Uh, yeah, that's a difficult one actually, to say this is done now. Um, sometimes that decision is made for you a little bit by, <laughs> you know, the budget or the time or something like that. But, Studio time. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, I think uh, it's just, again, you have, to, you have to really trust your gut feeling on on the on the kind of thing that we do and the stuff that I've done for other people with production and go does that feel right and if it feels right then it probably is or it's probably okay if it be, you know. <laughs> can you leave it behind because um, I can't imagine if you produced a song a couple of years ago and you play it again live on stage and say yeah. hey yeah. it's now better than it ever was yeah yeah and we kind of rotate the songs in our set so like recently we've pulled out a couple from a while ago that we hadn't played in a while and it's so it's different now because you've got different experiences and and the way the band's gone and all those things so um, yeah you kind of have to embrace them and they're all like little children or something so that they grow up and you have to let them be their own thing um, a festival like this do you prefer the club gigs more because you can play in a longer time and do much more different things. Yeah, I, I like them both actually. They both have a certain charm. So yeah, last it's a political I, correct answer. Well, no, it's true. It's true. They they both have well, they both have uh, pluses and minuses. Yeah. So uh, last night we did a we did a club show and uh, it was great. We had a great time. We played for you know a long time, probably two and a half hours by the time we'd finished, and because uh, we felt like playing. So and we knew today we had to do a shorter set. But they, it's like a discipline each one. So we know. Okay, we got to be a bit more concise today and perhaps uh, get a good cross-section of the type of stuff that we do to some people that have not heard it before. Whereas generally if we're at a club, it's going to be people who've come specifically to see our show. And so there's an element of feeling like you can stretch out a little bit more with them. And so uh, it's, it's all good. It's different, definitely different uh, playing a festival or, a, or one of your own club shows or something. But... Uh, it's nice. It's nice to be able to do them all. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I mean, I think somehow we found our way into that. Uh, and there's, well, the first people to catch on to what we were doing ever were, were other musicians, and they'd always go, "These guys are all right," you know. And and uh, so perhaps it, it was a slightly slower road to reach some of the more traditional music fans. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we just do what we do, and we play how we play, and. Uh, and uh, hopefully we think, well, if we're having a good time and uh, we like it, then hopefully there's some other people out there that will like it as well. But that's always the best compliment if other musicians appreciate what you do because it's a, it's a real opinion that you can uh, value. So that's great. Career-wise, do you have a path f that you see yourself in and that you have to walk? That and you see, hey, Matt Scovel is in about five years. He's there. Um, I, uh, you know... You do try and think what's going to happen, you know, and what road should we take. But again, it, it is that thing of, well, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to try and uh, fake anybody or, or you know, uh, I just want to do what I feel and what I play and then hopefully you'll reach that audience. So, 
beyond sort of uh, hoping that that audience is out there to reach and trying to reach as many of them as you can in whatever way that that takes I uh, we just keep doing what we do and, and uh, it seems to be working out okay it's a slower road than getting on a big record label and having you know half a million euros to put behind uh, the promotion of it you know yeah it's a kind of grassroots you know spread the word some people come to the gig they tell other people but street, it's working street teams street teams exactly yeah. you know so uh, so but actually it feels good when you start building that because you know those people are gonna stick with you they're really interested in what you do and they found you and uh, so that feels feels really good to, to to kind of get build really loyal fans as opposed to pe people who are maybe looking for the next you know the next hip thing or something so we don't worry about that so. it's, a, it's the musician where Matt Schofield is such flabbergasted about that she said, oh, that's a man, I still can learn everything about it. Right. Who's, who's is there a musician for you that you say, that's a guy oh. I, I still can learn everything about? Oh, man, yeah, I mean, uh, I listen to mostly the same guys I've always listened to, and they, I never get tired of it, and they never cease to amaze me, so that might be B.B. King, or it might be Oscar Peterson, the jazz piano player, you know, it could be uh, anything, and... Uh, yeah, every day you, you find something, but I mostly listen, yeah, to the same same stuff. And when it's when it's as amazing as that original music is, there's always something new to find in it. So yeah, I never get tired of it. In fact, you... the more and more I go back to the stuff I've always listened to, and I search for new stuff, and I find something cool. But still, at the end of the day, I go home and I put Albert King on or something. <laughs> yeah, but I think somebody should push the envelope and make new thing of the old stuff. I, I quite agree. And, uh, I mean, we try and do that in our own way and just not be too uh, held into what, who, you know, what somebody out there might consider as blues or, you know. We, try, we just try and play what we play and, and we, we work on it that way and uh, you know mostly I find inspiration in terms of new moves new music that's coming out it tends to be jazz that uh, I listen to I don't really listen to a lot of contemporary blues or blues rock uh, I like the original blues that I grew up here in and then I like uh, you know most of the guys whose records I buy now are like John Schofield the uh, guitarist or there's a guitar player called Michael Landau he's from Los Angeles fantastic guitar player those are the guys who are pushing it for me and it involves incorporating some different styles and then I, I listen to those guys or the same old blues I always listen to so one of the final questions what comes harder to you the lyrics or the, the music oh definitely the lyrics because for a long time uh, my world was all guitar and it was all sounds and, and uh, but then you realize you need to find a context for your guitar playing to go in so that it's not just a load of old guitar playing nonsense for you know you need to find a vehicle for it so uh, yeah the, the writing songs and lyrics has become much uh, more important to me as I've got older and uh, I actually write a lot of songs with my girlfriend she uh, writes a lot of the lyrics with me and for me so uh, so that's been great we can get together and see what we can come up with and try and you know it's you you're always aiming to stay in if you go too far outside of the blues kind of format and tradition then it's not blues at all anymore so it's almost harder to write for a certain you know within the boundaries but also push it a little bit so it's been really interesting that's more what I focus on these days is songwriting and trying to sing as well as I can and and arranging and all that kind of thing more so than just being the world's best guitarist or something I don't I, I lost interest in worrying about that a long time ago so I just play what I play and then try and find something that connects with people so all that stuff yeah you know, all my favorite guys they can play one note and you know it's them and uh, so I'm always looking for the one note not the hundred notes you know so uh, but it's good to have some other stuff to go with that one note but uh, you know, it's it's the big note, the one big note. So. You're gonna see if can you you can set your mark in the blues uh, yeah. of the musicians' world. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna end this interview. Thank you very much for Thank sparing the time much. you had for us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you very much. Cheers.